on the other side of the uh, hut just there. But as you can see, around the area, I have put the roof onto this building here, and also onto this one over here. Um, if I get my torch out of the inventory, we can see in here, I've already started taking down the floor just a little bit in here. Um, <clears throat> and I've got it all the way down to this level, all the way inside here. So we've got a lot more still to do there, but we're, we're getting there. And then on this one, I've raised the ground up around uh, the building here. And so we're going to have to make a little path that comes down into it. And then, of course, in here, the uh, height of it is down at this level already. So we've still got one level to go underneath the ground here. But let's grab up these ones as well. We might as well. And then you can see what's around in the area. I think I want to head up towards the northeast. Because I know that's a way that Nathan hasn't really been yet. So if we have a look at the map. Uh, I know that, that Nathan's done a lot of exploration work. Um, all the way over this uh, desert here. This uh, andesite sand desert. All the way up here. And a lot of the way to the west. And he's also done a lot of exploring down to the south here. We've already got this trader here. Over here this is where we found our first batch of... Uh, copper down on this little peninsula here and we've got another trader just there we do have a big ruins over here <clears throat> and i believe on one of these islands over here uh, somebody has started building a base there is also another base up here somewhere with another trader i can't fully remember where though but it's somewhere around there oh is it here there's a trader. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see it just here. There's a little dirt base there. <clears throat> Not much has been done in it, but it is somebody's base. So we do have a neighbour to the... Uh, I suppose that's dead dead east of us. Across this um, lake of water here. But I think I want to head up towards this way and basically have a search around in this area here. See what's there. And then up here as well. I think we could do well with having a search up there. So, uh, it's night time now. But we do have a decent amount of berries on us. We'll uh, top up before we go. We have a shovel. We have a prospecting pick. Uh, do we have an axe on us? No, we don't. I'll gather up a bit of... I mean, I think I put in one of these chests. We've got some... Flint. I think flint will be okay. Just chuck it on the floor. Oh yeah, and we have a sealed crock there. I'll leave that for when we get back. So if I take up these for now, we can nap a couple of axes. Um, and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, we found our first ball. This is kill you off. It's hit, it bit me once, but in, if you jump into the water, they're not too bad because they can't really swim that fast. You can swim a lot faster than they are. That's the best tip I can give anyone fighting wolves, especially at night. Run towards water and jump in. And then before you actually harvest them, I haven't got a knife, so I'm going to have to build a couple of knives. Just have a listen around, see if there's any others of them. And, uh,. So you don't get trapped. We're going to build a couple of knife blades. And then we can harvest. This is why I bring some flint out with me as well. Because I always forget something. This time it was a knife. So there we go. There's a couple of knife blades and some sticks. One knife. And two knife. So, what are you going to give us? A little bit of fat is probably the best thing we got there. Hopefully that was the only one around in the area. It is pitch black, so it's quite difficult to find anything. I found a couple of areas where I thought there might be some... Uh, 
meteorites, but nothing as of yet. There's another one which maybe we'll just dig just underneath the surface here and see. Andesite rock. So no, it doesn't look like it should be swayvite. We should see some swayvite if there is anything under there. And then this bit, I don't think it is either. I'll have a bit of food as well. Yeah, in this area, I'm not sure if we're going to find anything decent. It's always worth checking. Looks like we've got a ruin here, but it seems like it might have already been taken. Which is a shame. You know, for the longest time in this game, I have been really worried about going out at night. Um, this game has the almost uncanny ability to make the daytime seem really nice and safe. And then as soon as it starts getting dark, those exact same areas start getting really, really eerie and creepy. And looking like you really don't want to go anywhere you just want to kind of bunker down at home and uh you know where you know it's safe and you got it all lit up and it's nice uh but coming out at night it's uh can be very very rewarding because you can get a lot further than you would do just coming out during the daytime uh kind of going for half a day uh and then as soon as it starts getting dark kind of sprinting back to home if you actually take the time to force yourself to go out during the evenings, um, like at sunset, you start your journey out. Oh, and we've got some copper. Because you because you are forced to look around you very much more uh, forcefully than you would be otherwise, then uh, you start finding stuff you wouldn't normally find like this copper. I might have just walked past this during the daytime. So I'm not going to do it now. I'm just going to grab a waypoint. And then we'll come back for it. But what I will do though, is grab the surface nodes. Because we've got it on our map and marked out, we don't need those surface nodes yet. And that's basically us claiming our territory by taking those little surface, bit, surface bits. Uh, so that if anybody else comes over, they won't think there's anything there. It's just one of those things, but on a multiplayer server, there could be somebody else around here now, or on their way here. Um, they will already have it marked on their map if they found it first and didn't take those surface bits. So for anybody else that's already found it, I'm not actually taking it away from them. But anybody who comes after here after me won't be able to see it on the surface and so won't be able to mark it on their map. And it's just basically a way of saying, uh, there's tons and tons and tons of copper in this world. Plenty enough for everyone. Uh, this is my little bit here which I've claimed. I thought I'd just poke my head under the ground here. We're right in the middle of what looks like to be a crater. But I can't see any uh, meteorite stuff around. And it's usually up on the surface. But I thought this would be a good area to do just a little bit of pro picking just to see what is in the area and what did that say info log okay need two more samples and so if we come over here and then we should be able to get a sample from here okay need one more sample and then we'll dig a little bit through here just like that and then we should be able to dig this one minuscule amounts of uh, gold and very poor magnetite okay so we do actually have some iron around here somewhere so if we go to the sec the node mode search on uh, the pro pick let's just dig this block out see what is around in the nearest kind of uh, 16 diameter I think it is and again, if we come through to info log, no ore nodes nearby. Dig this way. 
no all nodes nearby, you can do it this way. And no all nodes nearby. Okay, so it's not around here. And it could be deeper down though. Um, but I, what I think we'll do is we'll mark on the map. I've already got some copper over here. Uh, but we'll mark on the map here. Um, was it small iron? Let's just do it like that. Why not? Um, I want, say, is light grey? Yep. And we will do a, I think a star there. There we go. We do actually have a road here which somebody's built, so I'm going to head over to that. You can see which direction we came off the road over here by Winfrey Abba's base. And then just came across here. We've got a first copper bit there. I've got a little bit of a cave mouth there to mark off. We got another copper vein here, and now we've got small amounts of iron in this area here. Uh, so we've got to pro pick all of this area out and see where that is. Try and triangulate down on it. Um, I've got this ruins here to go to, but I think that'll probably be dug out already. Um, and then we'll head over to this road. I might actually follow this road down, see where this goes as well. So here we are on the road. It looks like a fairly well established road at this point. You can see it forks off uh, here. It doesn't look like it goes very far. Um, and then it comes all the way down here. So I'm going to follow it south because I think that's where a lot of the people are on this road. I think this is a road that heads from spawn in the north to people's bases in the south. So if we head along here this might actually be a very very long 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 road. But we'll see. It looks like this is the place where the road uh, is still being built currently. You can see on either side it just comes down to a single single track now rather than having the uh, little pavement sections on the outsides. This looks so ominous jumping and running through these roads at night. Oh we have a little bit here. Oh this is this is Aladoc's watchtower. Oh cool he said he was working on this I remember that. This looks cool. Tell you what, Aladoc, your chiseling skills are brilliant. Let's have a look up here. And so, yeah, just as I thought, it's absolutely pitch black. Can't see a thing. But yeah, during the daytime, this would be quite a nice place to uh, come and just kind of watch the, watch the sunrise. It'd be really nice. And I imagine you get a really, really good view from here. Let's just see on the map where we are. We are here. So we've got the, the watchtower. Um, whose bases is down south? So you have Melania there. So it looks like it might come down this way and to her base. We have Belenor. And Raylis. Um, here we have uh, Jali, Siku, Arasaki. So it could come all the way over to the east here to go to Arasaki and Siku's base. Um, or it could come all the way around here like that. I think the idea that everyone's base will eventually get uh, a roadway going to it. Um, there are some main major roadways. It's nothing like um, is it uh, some of the really old Minecraft servers have these massive roadway networks going through. Um, it'll end up like that, but it's not not quite not quite that bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see the uh, all the different paths on the outside of the roadways are now starting to be put in again. Make these some more more of the established main roads. Um, and you can see exactly where it's got up to. This is really cool. I think it is, what time is it now? It is coming up to uh, about five o'clock in the morning. Very, very cold, out, minus eight outside. Uh, and we can see it is starting to snow as well. 
I would really quite like to wait and see the sunrise come up here. I think that'll be really cool. I want to see what it looks like. So, join me back in a minute when the sun starts to rise. And so the sun is peeking its head just above the ground here. And now we can see the view from out of the top of this watchtower. That looks really, really cool. I do like this. One of the benefits of having really tall buildings in this game is you get to see out over the beautiful landscapes. It is a very, very pretty game. And we can see the path coming in from the north up there. Coming in and heading around to the east. Or is it the south? Let's have a look. Yeah, heads off to the east here. Across there. And I think... We're going to head off, we'll come down, now if anyone's playing this and, sorry if anyone's watching this but doesn't actually play, um, you can't really get a grasp of how detailed this is and, and how much work goes into this. Each one of these blocks is chiselled and so that means this was a full block um, a full kind of 16 by 16 voxel block and then it's been painstakingly chiseled out to add all of this detail in it and then it's been put into a, uh, a machine with um, a load more materials and a lot more chisels and then replicated over and over and over and over and over again and then each one of these blocks can be put, put into place and there's like three or four different designs on this building uh, but you've got to kind of painstakingly put in place here and so it's a very very good design for, for a building um, but yeah it does take a long 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 time to actually uh, do some of these designs um, it can't be understated how, just how long it can take to do some of this um, I'm hoping to do a base tour with Aladoc at some point in the, in the future uh, and with other members of the server because uh, aladoc has got some incredible chiselling work put into their base. And we're actually heading down south towards another person who I consider to be a very, very good chiseler, who is Emerald Stars. I've been watching her videos. If you're not subscribed to her, head across to her channel. There is a link in my description below. Because some of the work she's done on her little house, uh, out in the middle of nowhere, right next to Raylus's house uh, down south, we can see where... Raylis is. Where's Raylis? There's Bellinor. There's Raylis. And she is down south somewhere over here. Uh, so this road will eventually go down to her, but I mean, we are miles and miles and miles off it yet. Um, but yeah, some of the work that she's been able to do on that house is incredible. I really, really love it. And seeing some of the stuff that other people have done on here, uh, it, it kind of puts me in mind to do some like major chiseling work myself however the style of buildings which we're doing at the moment these roundhouses they really don't tend themselves towards the kind of fine detail of the chiseling work they're more macro designs than micro design i think this is just a lookout pole i don't think it's anything really interesting but we can come up here and we can see where we're going where we've just come from. Yeah, I thought there'd be something up here, but maybe not. Might have just been a place where somebody came out of the uh, temporal storms. Yes, we shall carry on heading onwards. See, so we've got another wolf coming in here. I heard it behind me, just <laughs> tried to find the nearest batch of water. As you can see, these wolves, their AI doesn't really work that well in water at all. And now we just sit here and wait for a minute. Listen out. See, I can hear water flowing. Something swimming. But I think that's way over there. All of these wolves were in, there was at least two wolves. So I'm just waiting around just to see if there's anything else. It doesn't look like it, so I think I'm safe. Cut this guy up. 
There we go. No more fat. That's the thing I'm really interested in. So I think I'm going to head back towards the road. Oh, it's got a bit of a lag there. Head back towards the road because I did come off the road a little bit then just to try and find stuff. A little bit of copper here. So we will... Where are we now? What's the point? We are... There. Okay. Let's add another copper vein. Say orange. And pickaxe. And we'll be on our way. So we are out here in this andesite desert. And in the andesite deserts, it's actually a lot easier to find meteorites. And I found this little bit here and started digging down. And we can see meteoric iron. This is the first meteor we found. So um, I'm going to mark this on the map and then come back here and dig it out because I didn't bring my iron pickaxe with me. So I'm going to have to go back and grab that. But if we click on there, we can say Meteor. And that's good because we've actually got our first Iron Man. I do want to have a look around for some um, surface bits of iron. I'm going to cover this back over for now. But so long as I know where it is, that's really cool. And no, that's Undersite Stone. Undersite Stone. And there's more andesite stone there. It doesn't look like there's any loose pieces of iron around here, which is a shame. Uh, but we do now actually have a meteor to go at. I also think while I'm out here, I'm going to grab a bit of sand so I can stop panning when I get back. Uh, panning gives you some really, really good stuff, including the potential to get temporal gears. Um, the best way I find to pan, I'll show you when we actually get to it. Um, but it is essentially to put a YouTube video or something on in the background and just get to it. <laughs> it's just one of those things that you need to do. It's one of the more laborious tasks, but you can make it fun in other ways. And this is nice. On the way back to base, we found a trader's wagon. I'm going back to get my iron pick, but we might as well come up here and see what you have to offer. So you are a survival goods trader. Uh, you'll take rye bread, rice bread, flax twine and honey. You actually sell iron um, wolf pups as well. Nine gears though is a bit expensive for that. Usually about six to seven gears would sell them for nine gears. Would be a good price to sell at. So these aren't that good there. Um, hay beds as well. Oh no, no this is to, to buy. I can buy. The stuff we want to sell... Leather, once we get into leather, will actually be quite a decent commodity. That's fairly easy to get once we get the barrels and stuff up and running for it. So yeah, you're, you're going to be well used. So we will add in a trader spot. Where are we here? Not actually too far away. I mean, there's me and it's up here. It's not too bad. We go for trader and this survival. We'll go for colour will be white. And then add the trader icon. Okay. So we got another survival goods down there. I haven't actually put the profession of that one. And we've got building supplies down here. So yeah, we're starting to get the trader network built up. I believe there is one just there as well. So I want to add that one in. Um, we haven't got its profession yet. We'll go for white. We'll go for trader icon. Okay. Right, so yeah, you haven't really got anything for us for now. So I'm going to continue making my way back uh, to grab my iron pickaxe. So now we are back at our base here and I'm just cooking up some of the bush meat we got from the wolves. Uh, we're going to eat that straight away though because... Oh, is that... Is that an em Oh, no, 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 no. I suddenly got really worried then. I thought that was the sealed crock, which I uh, 
I've got in there, but it's not. It's good. <laughs> That's just a croc. Um, I made one before and I totally forgot. But yeah, uh, eating this meat because it has such a small um, spoil timer on it, it's crazy. Uh, but yeah, running around during the night time is definitely not my favourite thing to do in this game. Even now, it's been months that I've been playing this game, uh, game and it still gets me, this, this pitch black. I like being around my base. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure a lot of people that play this game will completely understand that as well. Um, it does get very, very eerie as soon as you're out of the, uh, the campfire's range. You just want to kind of run straight back to the campfire. Um, but yeah, I think this might be where I end it because I've got to run all the way back out there to the, um, to the meteor and gather that up. And I've also got to go and gather up the um was it the copper we got as well which isn't that interesting to watch so i think by the start of next episode i will have gathered all of that up and um i've already started getting up a load of uh, char uh a firewood there but a big charcoal pit as well um, which will probably go somewhere back here maybe just over there but yeah that's something to look forward to next episode as well i'm glad i've done a little bit of exploration and actually built out the map a bit and see where we have been today at least let's head back inside that's all of that meat now gone and so we can see we are just here we head up and along i actually cut off a road just here and so I came west, sorry, east across here. And then up to the north here. We got that copper all the way across and we've actually joined up with this road here. So what I think might be nice in the future is to actually join these two roads up and have an east-west road coming out from this little cross bit here. We'll have a fork that comes down here and then through here we can meet up with oh no the trader is actually up here where we found it so yeah we wouldn't be able to join up to that trader unless we cut it off much further up here and joined it up to this road maybe we could do two we could have one road basically following the coastline and that would actually come into the back of our little village here that might be quite nice so we'll take a road out of our village here and we'll come all the way along the coastline all the way along here we'll make a little fork off the road to be able to come down into this bit but we'll also bring it across and up here and then meet up with this road here yes that is a plan for the future at least and then we could do another road coming out from here uh, joining from probably about there, kind of south of Emspara's base, and then coming off down this way to meet up with this trader, and then down, probably meeting up about there. Yes, that is it for my night of adventure. Thank you for joining me today. If you did enjoy this episode, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe on the video onto the channel, and I will. See you next time.